There are many terrain analysis methods available to you within any kind of GIS. They allow you to do quite extensive terrain interpretation and also quantitative analysis. You access these through your spatial analysis tools in ArcMap and they are part of your surface tools. Over here you can create aspects, a contour list, so creating vector lines from a raster surface or a symmetrical grid of columns and rows. You can create curvature rasters, hill shades, anything really, view shades, slopes and so forth. So how do you create aspect? This now allows you to determine which way each cell is facing. Is it facing north, south, east, west, or anything like that? And all you really need for this is an input elevation raster. In this case, it is an IDW raster, inverse distance weighted raster. It is also in meters. I can see that by the high and the low values, which quite clearly show meters and not degrees. Degrees would be in decimal points. But if you want to verify this, you can always go to the source information of the raster. And if it gives you large values like here, visible in the screen here, then it quite clearly shows a planar projection and not a, um, a datum, so not latitude and longitude. So what do you do when creating an aspect raster? You will have an input raster. I'll give it a name and an output location and then there are two methods to do this. You can do planar. So now here you're going to calculate raster based on a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system or you can cal calculate raster based on a geodesic coordinate system. So if your data set for example is projected into a planar projection use planar. If it isn't use, use geodesic but in general you should always have a planar projection associated with your data if you do any kind of terrain analysis. While the geodesic option does exist, you should always do due diligence and project to a suitable planar projection before the time. But once you have put everything in, specified the inputs, you simply run the tool and you will get an output raster that is classified, in this case, into various classes ranging from north all the way um, through uh, clockwise back to north and with an additional class of flat, minus one. Now minus one indicates that you will have no aspect, so there's no specific aspect from that particular cell. And here the classes and the colors will indicate what these aspects are. Another very common terrain analysis method is slope. You can do slope based on degrees and percent rise. Again, you will need an input raster. So again, an IDW raster here with elevation. You have to give it a suitable name. And then you can define it for degrees and percent rise. Now, both of these use the rise over the run, so y over x. And degrees goes from 0 to 90, and percent rise really is infinite. A degree of 45 is the rise equals the run, and a percent rise of 100 is where the rise equals the run. You can again choose if you want to do planar or geodesic. The previous arguments apply as well. You can apply a z-factor. And here the, the unit is already given a meter because my underlying raster surface is in a planar projection. When you run it, in this case I will have a, a slope raster in degrees. It's already symbolized in an intuitive manner. I can see here that the maximum slope is just over 42 degrees, indicated by the red colors, and the green indicates the gentle slopes. Interesting here as well is that you can actually see, see that kind of circular shape in the, in the output. Now that is derived on the input points that we used to create the IDW raster, and they actually were constricted to a circular outline or core area of focus that didn't, wasn't actually symmetrical. However, because the raster, the IDW interpolation method does produce a raster or a symmetrical raster, in this case, the interpolation extends outside of the circular shape, giving you these lines that 
extend outward from the shape that you can see in the image. There are also some other terrain interpolation methods that you can use. For example, you can create a hill shade. Now, a hill shade is a visual analys analysis method. It's not really used for quantitative analysis or anything like that. It helps to create a pseudo 3D image of 2D data. Here are dependent on the soda zenith and azimuth angle. The one is calculated from the vertical to the position of the theoretical sun that illuminates the surface, and the, that is your altitude or your zenith angle. And then the azimuth angle is taken from the position or, or north, if you want to call it that, zero degrees clockwise all the way to where that pseudo sun is, normally at 315 degrees, so northwest or north, uh, west, north, northwest, north, northwest. Uh, these are your standard values. You can change these. However, if you do that, your pseudoscopic effect is going to come into play and you will misrepresent your data. So if you run Hillshade, what you'll create is a pseudo three-dimensional surface based on your input raster. And you can see that here. And here you can actually see that circular outline a little bit more clearly where those original input points were. And you can see that we have, it see, appears to be some uh, west to east trending ridges or mountain ridges across the surface as well. Other terrain analysis tools would be, for example, a curvature. A curvature raster is a hypsometric or, hypes, uh, or, or morphometric analysis tool. Here you are looking at convex and concave shapes in the landscape because we know that landforms can be classified in a certain way. Um, for example, a ridge will be more convex than concave and the lower extent of a slope going into a valley will be more concave than convex. So using these characteristics we can automatically classify a landscape. So curvature helps us in doing the classification. It is a morphometric analysis tool and you can, using ArcGIS, calculate both the curvature, so that would be default, the curvature and the profile and the plan curvature raster. Now your overall curv um, curvature raster is the combination of the profile and the plan raster so you don't have to actually create the profile and plan curve rasters as an output. So in this case we're just going to use the curvature raster. If it is negative it normally indicates a concave surface. If it's positive it normally in indicates a convex surface. So here you can see that the lighter values are uh, more convex and in your map you can see that too, that these seem to correlate with your elevation. So the curvature tool is a confirmation of what you can see in your terrain based on your slope and your, your raster, your aspects, anything like that. What you can also see from the curvature is that the drainage lines become a little bit more apparent because of course these are very much concave features. There are also other terrain al analysis methods, for example, a view shed. So for example, I have certain input points here. I can have telecommunication towers, or I can have viewpoints, or nesting areas for specific birds. And I want to know from these points, what of my input raster can I see? So that is actually called an, a view shed analysis, part of your surface tools in your special analysis toolbox. So if you run the view shed, it's going to give you an output raster that is basically a yes or no or Boolean yes or no raster, where it says yes, this is visible from my input point or my observer points, or no, it is not. Input requirements are the raster that you're going to be using. So in this case, again, my elevation raster projected, then the observer points that I'm going to evaluate this raster again, you'll have to give it a, a logical name. And then additional parameters that in this case you don't really have to um, apply. 
You can also apply Earth Curvature corrections. The default is to not use it, however, if you do check it on, then you'll use the Earth Curvature that is in place. So we're not going to use that here. We're going to run the tool and you will see that certain areas will be visible from my input points. These are my green areas and certain areas won't be visible from my input points. So everything that is pink in your screen won't be visible from these input observer points that I have defined. And that is pretty much an overview of the terrain analysis tools or some of them that you can do in ArcMap using the Spatial Analyst extension and within that the Surface toolset.